Hi everyone. So after I did what I did a, like a, a couple of hours ago, this is what I'm doing now. I'm packing, okay? I'm packing, cause I was as good as my word. I, I said, listen, I'd rather be fucking homeless than deal with this shit, okay? Now I already spoke to Brent, well, I didn't speak to Brent Mind, I texted them, I, said, I asked them to send me the surrender, t surrender tenancy paperwork a week ago, okay? Then I said, look, the next time Samira Egal upsets me, I'm going to fucking pay her a visit. And that's when they decided to send me the surrender notices. So, so seeing as they were already going to send me the paperwork anyway, I thought, you know what? Let me make good on my promise and fuck her shit up. Now, she wasn't there. Okay. But what I think happened was that she threw stuff at my wall and knowing that I was planning to come over there, she fucking dipped. And I think that's what she did. So when I came over there and she wasn't there, it would look like I was hearing things that she was throwing shit at my wall for, you know, that I was just hearing her do it. And she wasn't actually doing it at all. Okay. So I think that's what happened. But either way, it doesn't matter because there has been proof and evidence of her harassing me repeatedly. So it doesn't really matter anyway. The only thing that I regret about going over there is that A, she wasn't there. And two, I didn't bust her bed up and throw her fucking blankets out the window. Those are the only two things that I regret not doing and that I shouldn't like with regards to things like this. It's never about the um, it's never about what you do. Sometimes it's about the timing. And for me, we can go over all the legalities and we can go over the law and stuff like that. Listen, guys. The law stopped applying a long time ago when they got we got into this program. It stopped applying a long time ago. So we have allowed ourselves to be cowed for nothing. The reason why us TI is when we end up homeless, we end up miserable and we end up... It's not just because they're abusing us. It's because when we end up on the street or when we end up in a hospital, we don't prepare for when we go in there. That's the reason why we always end up being caught short by this shit. We don't prepare. We don't plan. When I went before, long before I lost my temper and busted Samiri Igar's shit up, I was already thinking a bit in my head about what I was going to do when I ended up homeless. I had a plan. I had something in the way of a plan. You seriously think I'm just going to go over there and bust somebody's shit up? Let me lose my temper and I'm not going to have a plan. And they know that. How long has it been since that, since that incident? Nobody in this place has called the police. Nobody in here has called the police. I was literally, I literally had my bag packed. Look at this shit. I literally have my bag packed, ready for the police to come and get me. Because for somebody like this, for something like this, right... They've even said themselves that I've had mental health problems and this, that, and the third. Now, granted, they were using my mental health problems in order to try and bury the crimes that I've been reporting. So, okay, I know that. So the one time where you have the opportunity to act and the one time when you have the opportunity to, to actually do something about said mental health person that you said was so dangerous and you said was so paranoid. When I go over there and bust up her shit and there is a live video of me doing it, you do nothing. Think about why that is. You all witnessed a crime being committed by somebody that has admitted to having PTSD Premenstrual dysmorphic disorder, borderline personality disorder. You've all seen it. You have all seen it. Not paranoid schizophrenia because that's the one that they like to use in order to bury the crimes, right? But you have all witnessed a woman with confessed psychological and emotional problems break into somebody's flat, fuck their shit up and leave. And you're all witnessing this same person literally risking being homeless, 
risking having nowhere to go than to put up with the abuse any longer. I want you guys to think. I want you guys to think. Think. Why have those videos of me busting up the place not been flagged yet? Why have, why has all, all the threats and stuff like that, why has it not been flagged yet? The police have been watching me for years. Everybody's been watching me for years and yet nobody's done anything. Why do you think that is? I am not gang affiliated. I barely have anybody on my side. I can't trust any of my social circle. My family have betrayed me more times than I can possibly imagine. Neglected, betrayed, abused, all of that shit. All of it. I have nobody in my corner. So how is it that I've been able to do that and no police have come over, no ambulance has come over yet? No support staff coming over to, you know, to try and get me to a, a secure facility. You have literally witnessed people being taken into mental health custody or being taken into custody. You've literally witnessed people all over the internet being taken in by mental health officials and by police over less than that. So what the fuck is going on? What is going on? The reason why nobody, that no police aren't coming, the reason why nobody has come over here with any, with any paperwork yet is because of the amount of evidence I've got of people committing corruption. I've got mental health committing corruption. I've got Brent Mind committing corruption. I've got police committing corruption against somebody who was supposedly mentally ill enough to make all this shit up. And yet you're committing, you're committing literal corruption in order to ignore evidence and in order to ignore reports. What is going on? What is going, that's what I'm asking you. If Samira Igar had not been breaking into my flat and throwing shit at my wall prior to this, if I had not had my throat mutilated, my ovaries mutilated, my face mutilated, my bones mutilated, my heart mutilated prior to this, then what's going on? Really think about the situation. It's been, it's been a couple of hours now. Like, hang on a second. What time is it? It's been a while now. It's been a while now since I did that shit. I uploaded the video almost as soon as I've done it. Hang, hang on a second. Let me just find my pad. Hold up. Yeah, so like that was a couple of hours ago. Let me just find my pad while I'm talking. That was a couple of hours ago. So my thing is this, right? If I'm making all this shit up and all of this is just a figment of my mentally ill imagination, then what the fuck is going on and why are there no police here? It's not that I want the police to come after me. That's not what it is. I don't want to end up homeless. I don't want to end up being in prison. And I don't want to, any of this to happen to me. I don't. I don't. Please don't mistake me. I'm just saying the absence of a decision made, even in the face of these crimes, is extremely telling. It is extremely telling. I must have gone over there, what, about, about like 10 to 11 o'clock? What time is it now? It's got to be the afternoon. I think it's on the floor. Just look. So I've been packing for the, I've been packing for a while now. All right, so let me turn this thing on. So, again, what's going on? And again, if anybody is going to come on my live and say, oh, you know, what you did was stupid, 
what you did was this, what you did was that, and the third. I get it. I completely get it. Again, if you are looking from the prism of a normal person, then what it looks like I did was that I ended up going over to somebody's house and terrorizing them when they weren't there. That's how it looks to normal eyes. But again, this is not a normal situation. You've got a whole fucking government conspiracy and it, it, it would have been different if, like, if it was just us, then, then I could understand why you would, you know, say that, oh, you know, I can understand why you would think that none of this was real and that gang stalking wasn't real. But it's literally happening on, it, like, gang stalking has literally been made public and you're still over here like, you're not getting it. You're not getting it. Imagine, I'm sitting here being irradiated to death, being harassed every day, being gaslit every day. My fertility is fucked. My thyroid, my thyroid is fucked. My heart is not doing so good. I am stressed all the time. These crimes are like my my gums are literally sinking into my face. I'm I've got gum loss over here. It was so bad the dentist literally had to say like what the fuck is going on? Because that gum loss is not natural. You guys need to wake the fuck up now. What is it going to take? You people literally saw a crime being committed right in front of you. Nobody's called the police. Why? I'm not gang affiliated. Look me up. If anything, gang members have been coming onto my page because I opened my mouth about them. Do you understand? I'm not gang affiliated. I'm about as unprotected as a person can be. When I said... On my last live, on the I think not on my last live, but on the live before, when I said that you have no idea the amount of power I have when the cameras are off, I was not I was not lying. But how did I get that? How did it get to a point where I could go around and do that and nobody's coming over? Even in the midst of the coronavirus, there are people that have come over complaining you know people that have come over based on complaints of domestic disturbance domestic you know not breaking into somebody's house and fucking up their shit domestic disturbance you've all seen it wake up guys wake up they wanted to get me out of here quietly so that they could conceal their wrongdoing for a little bit longer. That's what the plan was. But I said, fuck no, nah. if you're going to take me out of here, if I'm going out of here, I'm going out of here with a bang. And I did, literally. I'm waiting for the surrender tenancy before I make it official, before I make leaving official. I'm making for the, I'm making, waiting for the surrender tenancy to come through. The likelihood is, is that right now they're getting ready to try and get me sectioned. That's cool. I can understand. I get that. That's fine. Even with the amount of meds they're about to dope me up with, that will at least give me time to figure out what I got, what I got to do when I do come back here. So it will buy me some time if they're planning on doing that. Because once again, knowing what they're going to do to me and knowing everything they're going to try to do to me in order to gain control of this situation, knowing what they're going to do, I have a plan. This is not just me being kamikaze like all over the place and having no plan. Am I putting myself at risk? Sure. I am putting myself at risk, at great risk. 
but I was at risk already. There's somebody on YouTube who said, you know, you know, okay, so we know, we know what the government is doing. We know what our mainstream media has been doing. We know what our neighbors have been doing. So what are we going to do? Are we going to just sit around, put up with it? Like, guys, you must have known at some point that I wasn't just going to sit around and rant about it. I wasn't just going to rant. I wasn't just going to go off and rant about shit. Because how is that helping anyone? I mean, sure, you do not have to do what I did. You don't have to go over to somebody's yard and bust up their shit. But when somebody is literally abusing you, when you're literally being sterilized, guys, sterilized, you're having your voice box burn out. People are literally being killed off. Like, what is it going to take? Like, how did we end up in the position where we decided that being comfortable was worth more than our self-respect? That's what these perps have been getting us on. That's what these handlers have been getting us on. That's what they've always been getting us on. Do you have to be violent? No. You don't have to do what I did. You don't have to do what Aaron Alexis did or Myra May did. You don't have to do that. But at some point, your self-respect, your sovereignty, your right to live a life without abuse should mean a hundred times more than being comfortable. At some point, your self-respect, your self-worth, it has to mean something. The reason why these white supremacists have been, you know, cleaning up their act and putting a suit on is because ultimately they have no self-respect. They have no self-respect because hating people, hating people over bullshit means more to them than their self-respect. Because they know the problem is not other races. They know the problem is a the government. They've been knowing that. They've been knowing that. And yet instead, what did they do? We're, out, we're over here complaining about racism, complaining about black people being shot in the street. And yet what, what is anybody doing about it? There is a reason why these crimes keep prevailing is because they start with targeted individuals first. They start with the marginalized first. They start with the people you make fun of first. They start with the people you hospitalize first. They start with the people you ignore first. At what point do we start having respect for ourselves? And say, I don't care about the fucking flat. I don't care about your fucking hospitalization and your section in. I don't give a fuck about any of that because my self-worth means more. At what point do we start saying that? At what point do we stop putting up with people gaslighting us, people abusing us? At what point? Do we stop putting up with that? These perps have no fucking self-respect ever. Almost every single person in my life accused me of having no self-respect because they had no self-respect. Desperate, they used to call me. And yet how desperate do you have to be to be friends with people that are fucking underage people? Listen to me. Listen to me. Okay. At what point do you start prioritizing yourself over abuse? This piece of shit, Samira Egal, who's flat out busted up. She still hasn't been home, by the way. Because this fucking, what do you call it there? This fucking um, social distancing shit. 
You can't be out of the house for more than an hour. So where the fuck is she? Where the fuck is she? These perps have got no self-respect whatsoever. Absolutely none. Because if they did, it would never have led to this situation. At what point do we say enough is enough? At what point? I'm sorry she wasn't there. I'm sorry she wasn't there. I would have looked forward to that. And if I didn't stomp that bitch's head in, that would have at least been a good fight. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of us being civil for no fucking reason and acting like that's what maturity is. I have had everything taken from me. Everything, every possible choice I could have had for my life, that's been taken from me. That's been taken from me. It was taken from me long before I ended up in this flat. I didn't even want to be here. I did not even want to be here. I know there have been some perps right now saying, oh, she shouldn't have had her own flat because they never expected me to be happy while I was here. They never expected me to be well adjusted while I was here. They never expected me to stand my ground while I was here. They just thought that I was going to fucking rant on Twitter and Facebook. I've been saying for months that I wasn't going to fucking keep doing that anymore. I said that for months. Now I shouldn't have had my own place. Now I shouldn't have my own pet. I didn't even want to fucking be here. If Brent Mind had done what they were supposed to do, what they were supposed to do, and get rid of those motherfuckers that were harassing me, this situation wouldn't have happened now. Do you remember Quasimodo? That person I call Quasimodo. They kicked her ass out. Do you know what she did to me? Do you know what she did to me? All she did was accuse me of stealing from her. That's it. That's it. That's all she did. That is the only thing that she fucking did. I used to think she was a perp because she just kept doing it relentlessly. And then at the same time, she wanted to make friends with me again. To act like she was a good person. I wasn't trying to have all that. But they kicked her out over ju just for threat, just for f not even threatening me, not threatening me, not throwing shit at my wall. She was peaceful for the most part. They kicked her out. I watched it happen. They kicked her the fuck out over that. And yet when somebody's throwing shit at my wall for a year, when somebody's harassing me for a year, playing mind games for a year, stalking me for a year, hacking me for a year, nobody does anything about it. Does that make sense to you? Does that make fucking sense to you? I didn't even want to be here. Do you understand? When this first situation started happening, I played you a recording from July of 2019. And I said, I was having some, I was having some dark thoughts of this, that, and that, some fucking bullshit. Some fucking bullshit. Yeah, I've got a lot to tell you after, you know, after I leave here or whenever I leave here. On the day that I leave here, I've got a lot more to tell you. But basically, I was saying, oh, you know, I'm having dark thoughts and I'm having violent thoughts and shit. And I said I wanted to leave. When that fucking hateful ass cockroach, Esarad Fox sat in front of me, he said, why do you want to leave? Like he was interrogating me, the piece of fucking shit. I wanted to leave from July of 2019 because of how bad the harassment was. Now, don't get me wrong. The fact that I don't have to share a bathroom... The fact that I don't have to share a kitchen, I love that part. There are certain parts where, even with the harassment, I wouldn't have 
I would never have like swapped living alone for anything because I loved it so much. But it was at a point where the harassment was just getting too much. And I said, look, I can't take this anymore. I have had years of harassment over at Chatsworth Road only to move here. And it's happening again. I have warned Brent Mind about this repeatedly. I have warned mental health services repeatedly. I have warned the police repeatedly. And they didn't listen to me. Okay? I warned them about this repeatedly and they didn't listen. And yet suddenly when the shit hits the fan and I lose my temper suddenly my mental health is to blame for all of it. We're not going to play that game today because there are certain things that I want done and when they're not done, consequences happen and who suffers it? Me. So I'm going to do what I want, say what I want because these people would like, after everything that they've done to me, and the ways that they've ruined, not even my psychological health, but my physical health too. You have no idea how bad it is. I, I put a health report. I put a health report like a few years back on YouTube, detailing the capacity at which my body is running. I'll be willing to bet it's running at an even more, even lesser capacity now. I'll be willing to bet that. These people have fucked with my physical health as well as my psychological health. And it's not even just through the psychological abuse, which, which would have been bad enough. It's through the physical abuse as well, through the remote weaponry. And again, this is not something out of a science fiction book. This is not something out of a science fiction book. This is not something out of a fucking thriller novel. This is real life. Look the fucking shit up. I'm tired of this. So Samira Igar, you got your revenge. You got me upset, you got your revenge, you got your attention. Is it everything you ever wanted? I've been sitting here for hours and nobody's called the police. When did I when did I fucking go over there and bust your shit? I went over there and bust your shit at about fucking what? Close to eleven o'clock. It is now close to two o'clock in the afternoon and nobody's been here yet. That's how much these motherfucking people hate you. That's how much these people hate you. Was it worth it? 